Hey guys, hope you are doing good. In this video, we are going to learn about Dundam methods or special methods. Now these are built-in methods which helps us in many ways. Let me tell you why the name Dundam. Because the methods what we are going to use here is like we'll be having a double underscore before and after its name. Right? So that's the reason why the double underscore has been shortened and given as Dunder. So if you're comfortable with calling it as special methods, yes, you're welcome to call, but I'm comfortable calling it as Dunder methods. Now let us see some example so that you can understand what is the use of Dunder methods. Now in this program, I'm just adding, uh, getting two inputs and adding the values. That's it. I'm not doing anything big. So let me run this code for you and explain what's happening there. So let me give 12 and 23. It is saying this, right? So let us let us see what's happening exactly. So when I create an object for this, nothing is happening. An object is created. An empty object will be created. There will be nothing inside the object. So as of now, an empty object is created with nothing, right? And I'm calling the method setval with the object add obj. So when I call the method setval with the with the help of the object add obj. Now, as usual, the object which is helped to which used to call the method will be passed internally to the object self here. So when it comes here, when I say self dot var one, it creates a memory space for var one inside the object obj one. Sorry, uh, add obj, right? So inside the object add obj. Now and then I'm getting some input that value will be stored inside the uh, variable var1 which is present inside add obj now next line i'm getting uh, doing the same thing it creates the memory for the variable var2 inside the object add obj and getting some input so that is how it works because uh, like other programming languages python uh, doesn't require uh, what variable declaration right in other programming languages like c++ or java or c anything you take you may need to declare the variable before and then you use it. So while declaring the variable itself, like the memory will be allocated when the object is created. But here I don't have any variable declaration. So the memory for this will be allocated only when the particular method is getting called. Okay. Now add method is called again. Uh, the self will be holding add obj. So when I say self dot var one, self dot var two, it is like the values which are present inside the object add obj. So it will take that and creates a new variable called the sum inside the object add obj and then stores the value. Now, if I am not using this method, that set file method, I'm not using it. So let me run this code for you. Now it throws an error, says that there is no attribute var1, right? Even var2 will not be there because the memory has been allocated for var1 and var2 only inside sit well not inside the class so this or instance attributes so so instance attributes can be initialized or can be created only inside any method right but if I, I may sometimes i may not require to call any function right like the sit well right or i may forget to call the functions like this so what should i do to avoid this confusion so let me tell you what should i do now if at all i want my variables to be created right once an object is created Right? So when an object is getting created, at that time itself, I want all my variables, whatever attributes that I require, need to be allocated memory during the creation of object itself. For that, we'll be using a method called this init. Now this init method is a dunder method. Right? If at all you're from some other programming language, you would have seen constructor in that programming language. Right? So this init method is similar to constructor. So in this init method, what and all variable is required for me, right? For my entire program, right? I can create it here and then initialize. So if I don't want uh, to initialize with any value, I can initialize it to none or I can initialize it to zero. If it is a value, I can initiate a variable or if it is an integer variable kind of thing, I can initialize it to zero. That is better. So let me say add. So these are the three variables that I'm using in my program, right? So sorry, it's not add, it's sum, right? Yeah, it's some. So these are the three variables that I'm using for my entire program. So whatever variable is required for my entire program, I can create those variable inside my init method because init method will be called automatically, right? So this method will be called automatically whenever an object is getting created. 
So when an object is getting created at this point of time, now here your init method will be called. Okay. So don't forget that init method will be automatically called whenever an object is getting created, right? Okay. So let, let us run this code again for you. So it gives you the output sum of zero and zero is zero. Very simple, right? So it, this it, like even though I didn't call this uh, set val method. Uh, it is not a problem for me because my variables are getting created here, right? I'm creating the variable there. Got it? Okay. So this init method is very important in any any uh, class that you create, right? So any class you create, make sure that you're having an init method and all the variables that you are going to use in your program, right? Or all the attributes that you're going to use in your program, make sure that you're creating it inside the init method, okay? So now let me run this code for you without any problem right my programs will work because I have already created or allocated memory for var1 and var2 and then sum got it so this is the use of init method now once the object is created and after completing everything it is not required for me to uh, hold the memory anymore so I'll be uh, using a keyword called as del and then uh, say add obj now this will delete the object right delete the object which is created and let me run this code for you i'll say like 23 it's it's just printing the output and here at this point my memory will be deleted but i'm not getting any information that that my memory is released so to give that information i'll be using a dunder method called this underscore underscore del underscore underscore now this dunder method helps me in providing the information that uh, my object is deleted or if i want to do something right while deleting the object i can do those things i can just just now let me say uh, object is deleted right now when i run this code again for you sorry let me run this code oh, i'll give 12 23 now you can see that the it's giving the information that the object is deleted now this is like a destructor which you are uh, using in your uh, other programming languages like c++ or java or like you'll be uh, you'll be using destructor right so you can use this like your destructor right so your uh, init method is like your constructor and dil method is like your destructor people those are not from other programming language you are very new to it forget about it don't worry right this init method will be called automatically when the object is created and underscore underscore dunder del method will be called automatically when the object is deleted so if at all you want to do something when an object is created you can do it inside the init method if at all you want to do when an object is going to get deleted you can do it in your del method got it now let me tell you about two other uh, very important dunder methods now here let me consider that i am not calling the display method and let me try to print the object directly right add obj right so when i print the object directly let us see what's happening let me give 12 23 so when i print the object it is printing the reference of the object or the information about the object right but I don't want that but I want my value or I want my uh, what output to be printed when I print the object that is not directly possible for that we'll be using a dunder method called as str right so let me say def underscore underscore str underscore underscore and then say self now consider this display method is not required for me so let me comment this out it's not required for me and let me say copy and paste it here just say written this now what this method is doing is I'm just returning the uh, statement returning a string statement a formatted string statement right now here when I say print add obj now actually it is not possible right it is it, it, what it does it just prints the information about the object but if at all i have an str method present inside my uh, class right if i have an str dunder method present inside my class when i say print add 
obj it goes to the str method directly and then say uh, a self will be storing add obj so this will be returned as it is to my print statement right this is what the str method does whenever uh, i'm trying to print an object directly the str method will be called so whatever i want to do inside the str method i can do it so let me say 12 and 23 right so it's printing it right so it means that it's just returning the statement and printing it right i can also use one more method that's called as wrapper r e p r right so this wrapper method is just same as the uh, works just same as your str method right so you can also get that the same thing but the what is the difference between this str method and uh, wrapper method when uh, does, when both does the same thing right so as far as uh, uh, python uh, dot uh, when you go and see the python org documentation they say that wrapper is the uh, uh, what official representation and then uh, str method is a informal representation right but both does the same work without any difference if at all i have both the methods present inside my class right so let me have uh, both str and wrapper methods so for the difference let me say print i am in str method right so when when i when i have both wrapper and str method present inside my class right so when i run this code let me see right? let me tell you how it works right when i say 12 and 23 now it calls the str method not the wrapper method so str method has been given more priority when i create an object and call it uh, inside the print function right so when i uh, use the print function and call any object inside that directly it goes and calls the str method right so even though wrapper method is there it will call only the str method got it so if i want to call the wrapper method right i may need to say prints i may need to explicitly call it right so when both the uh, methods right both the dunder methods wrapper and str are there it gives preference to the str method not to the wrapper method right so to to call it explicitly i may need to call it with the wrapper method explicitly like this right wrapper and then like this and when i run this code let me clear the string and run the code for you i'll say 12 23 now here first time when i say print add obj it calls the str method right and when i say uh, wrapper of add obj it calling the wrapper method so this is how it works right so if at all i want to call it ex uh, call with wrapper method i may need to do it explicitly if i have both the things together if only one is there it will call either the wrapper or the str method you're with me guys okay now let us see an important uh, dunder attribute right so we have seen dunder methods now we are going to see a dunder attribute that is uh, helpful in uh, printing the documentation about or the information about the class which we are giving here right so i'll just say this class helps us to add two numbers okay so this is the information that i'm giving about the class now if i want to print this information i can just say print and the class name addition dot underscore underscore doc underscore underscore now this underscore underscore doc underscore underscore attribute it's a dunder attribute which helps us to provide this information right while running the code so let me clear the screen for you and then run this method let me say 12 23 now you can see the information is given here this class helps us to add two numbers and if i want to give it before doing something i can just like let me copy and paste it just just providing information that's all this helps us to provide some information before starting the program right uh, let me clear the screen for you okay run this code so see you're getting this information it's just printing the documentation information for us got it
that's it for this video guys uh, i've covered like most often used dunder methods if at all you have any uh, doubts or queries please uh, comment in the comment section i'll get back to you and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel thank you very much